UFC welterweight Anthony Pettis, who takes on Nate Diaz at UFC 241 this weekend in Anaheim. And Anthony, uh, thank you for joining us because it feels like it's, it's hard to draw you out of the lake. It's hard to draw you out of the <laughs> out of the river these days, man. Where does this fishing uh, obsession come from? Man, the uh, fishing just uh, for me it's just a pastime, man. Like I, I found uh, something that I can do outside of martial arts, outside of business, because I own a lot of businesses in Milwaukee. So from a training camp, I usually go into the business world, but fishing is just kind of like a little offset and uh, it's kind of myself, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, can you, can you share with us uh, what are you going for? Like different different. Uh, species like different different angles to throw like, what is what is the format that's the fun part of fishing there's so many different types of fish they all eat different ways and they're all different depths so like figuring out what you're going for in wisconsin like where i live at we got a uh, salmon going on right now trout so we're doing a lot of lake fishing we got bass in the river like when i, when I did it embedded we were on the river doing bass fishing so uh that's that's like part of the game is figuring out the fish and how to how to make them uh you know bite you eating these things or are you just throwing them back i throw them back <laughs> Well, man, I got to say that, that this week, it, it seems like, I mean, you're always a confident guy. You've been confident throughout your entire career, but it felt like I'm seeing like a sort of an old swagger come back out of you this week. Is that fair to say? Oh, man, it feels just like the old times. Like when I woke up this morning, I'm like, this motivation I have on the wake cut day, waking up on weight, like it, it just, I feel grateful again, man. Like even I was just telling my, my fiance, I was like, just having these, these cameras in my face, I, I feel grateful again for that. Before it was like, oh, I got to do this again. Like it was like a dread. Um, I think the weight cut had a lot to do with that. You know, I'm, I'm out here, no, no sunglasses on. Usually I usually have to wear sunglasses because I'm sunk, you know, sunk in, but I just feel good. Is, is it, uh, how much of, of it is, is also the, the guy you're fighting, Nate Diaz, and how much of it is that you did have that big win against Steven Thompson? I remember talking to you before that fight, and you said your confidence, if you would be honest, wasn't completely back, and then obviously that was a great result. Which, which one of those played more into the way you're feeling now? I think all of it, man. Like, just the uh, accumulation of this, this wave I'm on right now. Like, obviously, the, the opponent, um, the real fans know me and Nate have, have history, um, which is weird because, like, he hasn't talked much. So it's like, a kind of, it threw me off a little bit, but it is what it is. This is my 31st professional fight, so I'm I'm not really buying into that 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 uh, that hype of talking back and forth, but um, man, having him as my opponent, I was up 5 a.m. every day running. Like I knew what I wanted to do to this guy, and that's embarrass him. And uh, after this fight, you know, we can we can shake hands and be done with it. Yeah, and I got to say that eventually, whenever this fight was made, I was expecting some of that animosity, yeah. some of that old beef, to be more of a storyline, and it kind of hasn't. Can you real quickly just just tell me what what was the what was the essence of this? There was an incident in Mexico City. There was tweets back and forth, right? There was a, like a club incident. Yeah. What what happened between you and Nate Diaz? Um, it wasn't Nate Diaz. It was his crew, man. Like uh, actually, the club scene was Nick. It was Nick Diaz and my one of my friends and his friends. They were talking back and forth. Like we can't control our friends, and I was no harm, no foul. Boys, dudes are gonna be dudes. Like I'm not getting into that. After I beat Gilbert up in Mexico. Mexico City, or no, after I beat Gilbert up, then when I went to Mexico City, Nate had something to say. I think Serge fought there. And uh, we just had a little back and forth, but Ariel Huani had a camera on me, and he waited until that happened actually to say something, man. So I was like, all right, this guy has a problem, but I don't know what it is. After watching this unfold, it sounds like he was jealous. Like, honestly, I thought I was waiting to hear what his real problem was, but it just sounds like it's jealousy. Is this the most personal fight you've had in some time? I can't even remember the last time that you you would have had a real personal one. The last one was Cowboy, um, when Cowboy was talking to talking so um, this this time, um, you know, I don't know. It's weird. Like I started off having it personal and like and being in these my feelings, and now it's just like I'm so confident and ready. Like I just gotta go perform. I'm, I'm gonna go out there and just show the world who Showtime is. One thing you said that interests me a lot yesterday is that uh, this is a different version of you at 170 than even the last one we just saw, which wasn't that long ago. Yeah. But you, you needed to come in with sort of a different uh, frame in mind. And this one, you want to be, be quicker, whereas the last one, you wanted to be bigger. Is that another thing that's sort of fun to be in a 170 is that you can kind of fine tune your body to what you're trying to do in the fight? Exactly, man. And I'm not like killing myself to get there. Like, like I know at 55, I'm like, I got to be lean and mean. Um, but then I'm fighting a wrestler, so I'm like, let me get as big as I can and then try to kill myself to make weight. Whereas at 170, it's a natural weight for me. Like, I, at Wonder Boy, I was a little bigger just because of the game plan. You know, I had to stay there. I couldn't veer off to the side and, and, and dodge his punches because when kicks come, mm -hmm. Diaz is not the, not the same thing. You know, I can move. I get to I get to mix it up and, and, and be on my toes. So uh, it's, it's fun. To, it's, it's fun to use my body as a machine. And I know I'm a machine, man. Like, I, when I'm in the gym training at 170, I'm whooping everybody's ass, you know, I'm, and then I go to 55 and I'm saving myself. So I just feel the difference. How do you compare the feeling of going into this fight against Nate Diaz to title fights? I mean, you've been part of some of the biggest title fights in UFC history. What, how do they compare? Man, honestly, the buzz on this fight is huge, bro. Like, I, I've had title fights. I was main event last fight. The buzz on this fight is huge, and um, rightfully so. We, we both come to bang. Um, probably two future Hall of Famers, and, uh, you know, I respect his fighting style just because we don't have, like each other's persons. His fighting style is gangster, man. I respect that. After this fight, you hunting Conor McGregor? Because it seems like that would be the next step. Is that the plan? I don't know, man. Like, I'm such in a good spot right now. 170 has some killers. 155 has some killers. I have a lot of unfinished business at 155. Um, I got one guy at 170 I still want. Um, so we'll see.
Well, you looked great against Stephen Thompson. You look great coming into this week. Excited to see you at this weight again, man. Appreciate the time. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports and analysis, download the ESPN app. And for live streaming and special content, subscribe to ESPN+.